Welcome back, everybody, to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 18. Continuing on again this week with another episode, it's number 93. We're just a few weeks out now until the next All-Star game, and we are starting to get things on track with this team, at least offensively. On the pitching side of things, we're still looking for some help. We called up Andres Valdez last episode, and the first impression was very positive. But still, there might be a need to make another move. So I've updated the trading block, and we'll see if any offers come in. The players I'd be most willing to trade for a relief pitcher would be Mike fulton Steven Gonzalez, and now Josh Harrison. I feel with Nick Gordon at AAA, we do have some insurance in the middle infield spot, and Harrison might be our best position player to potentially trade and still upgrade the team. That's the important thing. If we can't upgrade the bullpen, then I don't really want to trade Harrison, and I think he's a great player. I just think he's a little easier to replace than others. We start off the episode by going through this Kansas City series and we continue our winning ways. Now 42 and 36. Gary Tadano with a great outing. Andres Valdez with another shutout inning. In the next game, 11 to 1. I love seeing this. Nelson Cruz has four RBIs. Jorge Polanco continues his great year at the plate. Two more great innings out of Valdez and Fowler with seven good innings. We beat Kansas City once again on the road, a triple from Buxton, a few home runs. This is the blueprint this team should be following. Four straight road victories, and then we go back home and lose our first game to the Texas Rangers, allowing nine runs. Tough day for fulton and then Andres Valdez, his first rough go of things in the major leagues, allowing four runs. We win the next day, still allowing a lot of runs, eight to seven. Dallas Keuchel gives up four in this game, and then there was one unearned run. To follow, again against Texas, we win 8-6. to six. A lot of scoring going on in this series. We make a come-from-behind victory in the ninth. This is where I wish there was like a scoring log so I could see who actually won the game for us in the bottom of inning number nine. But really encouraged by this recent stretch of games, and now we look for another series victory. We're going to dive into another game, Texas and Minnesota. We've climbed to the top of the American League Central for the first time this year. This is really, really impressive after a tough start, especially with all the losing we did against the White Sox. We're going to make a move, however. Willie Ordonez isn't playing a lot, and his bat hasn't been great this season, so he's going down the AAA. And we're going to be calling up center fielder Johnny Sandoval, another one of these players that's been drafted and developed. He's an outfielder with great plate vision. He's a contact hitter and especially good against lefties. I've been wanting to see him get a chance now for a while, and it's time. Johnny Sandoval is being sent up to the majors to start. Buxton needed a day of rest anyway. So let's get into game four, Twins and Rangers in Minneapolis. Nelson Cruz giving the rookie a little pep talk before his first career major league game. And Maxwell Fowler takes the mound as his season is also improving, getting the ERA below four. Hope you're enjoying these recent episodes, by the way. I'm trying to optimize this format so I can get more episodes out. And obviously this is the third one now of the last week. So leave your feedback below. This one is hit deep to left by Elvis Andrews. And it gets to the warning track and that's all. Texas has a pretty good lineup, I'd say, especially toward the top, and they have a lot of lefties, and we don't have many lefty pitchers. Here is a ground ball getting past Miguel Sano, a single into left, and then Nomar Mazzara. I believe he won the batting title earlier in this series. Certainly he was close, and quickly the Rangers get runners at the corners. This is also a very fast lineup, so they're able to get some extra bases here and there. And now, Rugnet Odor hitting pretty well in recent weeks. 1-1 one, one count, grounded to Goldschmidt, got the out at second. The return to first is a double play. Big time ground out there for Maxwell Fowler. And now the Twins to face Eduardo Rodriguez. Yasiel Puig still in this leadoff spot, and this may become a permanent change. Puig, first pitch, swinging and much improved at the plate recently. Hopefully we can get those long balls to come as well. Paul Goldschmidt against Rodriguez, striking out on a good changeup down in the zone. 
Nelson Cruz to follow. One, two, fastball. Called a strike. Tough one there for Cruz. The second strikeout for Rodriguez. Now Miguel Sano pops one up. It was pitched inside, and that is a pretty successful inning for Eduardo Rodriguez. Here's Adrian Nieto, their catcher. Not hitting very well in recent games, but an overall 262 average. Maxwell Fowler gets ahead and uses that changeup below the knees to get strike three swinging. Two away now, Delino to Shields. He'll hit this down the line and has blazing speed. Blackman cuts it off and that's not going to be good enough. De Shields is in with the double. Rangers trying to get their first run. No more Mazzara up the middle. It's a base hit to easily bring De Shields home. One nothing Rangers. Mazzara's progression in this series has been really impressive. He's become one of the Rangers' absolute best players. He's third in the AL right now when it comes to RBIs. Let's go to Minnesota. Trailing by one, Josh Harrison. How does he react to being put on the trade block now? Here's a 3-1 count. He'll rip it over to third base, backhanded, and the throw from Josh Morgan is in time. Out number one. And that takes us to the rookie, Johnny Sandoval, for his first Major League Plate appearance. He has very good contact against lefties. He does fall behind, though, to Rodriguez. Takes a changeup that he wouldn't be able to do anything with. And the 2-2 is in the air, and it doesn't go very deep. The first plate appearance for Johnny Sandoval results in a flyout to left. Let's go back to the Texas offense in the top of the fourth inning. Jarrett Parker at the plate. 2-2. Two, two, got him with the sinker. Good job by Maxwell Fowler. One thing I've noticed about him is the control is really good. He does a great job keeping the ball down. This one heads out to deep center. It's tracked down by Sandoval, who does have very good range. All of our outfielders that play have good range. Bottom four, Minnesota looking for some offense, and they get a little bit here. That's how you beat the shift. Don't normally get away with that very often. A single for Sano, and a double down the line. That is Mitch Garver into the left field corner. Trying to get something going with two away. Now Jorge Polanco. Rodriguez, the 0-1, turned on by Polanco, driven to deep left, it's back, it is gone, home run for Jorge Polanco, number nine on the season, capping off an incredible two-out rally, Sano, Garver, and Polanco get it done. When he initially hit this, I thought it was just a lazy fly ball, I didn't realize he hit that as hard as he did. Twins weren't done though. Charlie Blackman up the middle. How much damage can they possibly do with two out? Rodriguez had a great start to the game, but here comes the Twins. Stolen base for Blackman. The ball goes into center. No extra base, but now it's an RBI opportunity. Josh Harrison, line to right. It's down and headed to the wall. Blackman scores easily. Five straight two out hits. Three of them extra base hits. That's how it's done, and that's what our offense was missing the end of last year and the beginning of this season. Can Johnny Sandoval continue the inning? 1-1, one, one, no. Jam this one behind first base, and Kenny Vargas, the ex-twin we traded to Texas, gloves the final out. Top five for Minnesota, a lead given to Maxwell Fowler. Oh my, a rocket off the bat of Adrian Nieto. That's way out to right field and gone for a solo homer. That'll help out the cold streak he entered with in this game. Just a moonshot. I mean, I know that pitch was bad, but I didn't think it get clobbered that hard. 4-2. Still a lead for Maxwell Fowler. And Elvis Andrews looks at a sinker low. 2-0. That is past first base into right. Base hit Andrews. Next up, Delino to Shields. Had a double earlier and gets jammed, but it goes to the perfect spot. Andrews took off for second, taking Harris into the base. If he doesn't steal, it's probably a line out. It's just a really unlucky play on a hit that really wasn't great contact. Runners at the corners, one away, Mazzara. And here's the control now becoming an issue. We had to settle down Maxwell Fowler, get him to just hit his spots. There you go, slider on the inside. Then go outside with the sinker. We get the count evened up, 
And Fowler strikes him out on the big sweeping curve. Can he keep the Rangers to one run in the inning? Odor not offering on the slider. 3-1. Good curveball again. Now a full count with two away. Hammered out left field. Odor down for extra bases. One run scores and the game is tied. It all started with their nine hitting catcher going yard and then everything kind of fell apart for Fowler. 2-2 two -two here to Jarrett Parker. Losing him and walking. That would be the end of it for Maxwell Fowler. Not quite five innings. It looked good up until the fifth. But then it was time to turn to Tyler Duffy, who has a chance to make it to the All-Star game this year. I think he'll be able to do it. Here to try and keep it a tie game. And this is lined to left. Two pitches, gets the out. And the inning is finally over. But the Twins surrender a three-inning lead. Let's go top six, Kenny Vargas. Lifted down the line, headed toward the seats. Puig over a bit, not much room, but enough to make the catch. I believe Vargas was traded in the trade to get Jeremy Jeffress. The Rangers turned to their bullpen as well. Andrew Kashner used to be a starter. Now he seems to be a long reliever and is having a pretty decent year. And we get very lucky that that wasn't a called third strike. Polanco aboard, Blackman the other way, down for another extra base hit. Polanco flies around second, hits second and third with one away. Twins trying to retake the lead. Josh Harrison, 1-2, rips it down the line, but hooks foul. 2-2, two -two, pops it up for the catcher. Nieto doesn't have to move very far, out number two. So it's up to Sandoval. His third plate appearance of the day. Can he bring home the go-ahead run? 2-2. Two -two. It works full. Payoff pitch. Lined up the middle. Stopped. It's down. Sandoval reaches. A run scores. And the Twins still have the final out recorded. I thought this was going to get through. It was stopped. And by the time I was getting Blackman back to third base, it was too late. I seem to have one of these base running issues every game now, and this one definitely cost us an RBI opportunity. It's still the first career hit for Johnny Sandoval, and it gives us the lead. Twins trying to hang on to it here in the latter innings. Popped up, nicely done there by Duffy. Pitch count was pretty low, so I wanted him to finish off the inning. No more Mazzara like that idea. Going deep to left. This one's hooking to the corner. Blackman can't bring it back. It's gone, and the game is tied up again. The opposite field solo shot by No More Mazzara. Bottom seven. Yasiel Puig. 3 0 tries to give the Twins the lead right back. 3 2. Bad take. Fastball in the zone, definitely hittable, strike three. Next up, Paul Goldschmidt, and that was left up. Big mistake by Kashner. It's drilled a long way, back, and gone! Home run! The lead goes back to Minnesota in this back and forth game. Solo shot for Goldie, it comes at a perfect time. 6-5. There was so much offense in this four-game series. In each game, each team had at least five runs. And the Twins trying to take the series here, get the big home run and turn it over to Jake Reed. He's been really inconsistent since his great year as a rookie. But he opens up his day with a strikeout of Jarrett Parker. Next up, we have Cleveland Stein with a grounder past Goldie into right field. Kenny Vargas, way inside, somehow gets ahead of it. Great piece of hitting by Vargas. Two straight singles, and the Rangers make it three. Josh Morgan into right. Here's Puig, comes up throwing. Texas wants the tie, and they get the run. Puig's throw a bit up the line, and Texas once again erases the lead. They want to take the lead back. Another single. I don't know what's up with Jake Reed right now, but it was obvious he wasn't having his best day. So Tony Watson comes in, and he has not been up to our expectations since signing him this offseason. Facing Elvis Andrews, full count, big strikeout on the outside. Just like the one Cruz took earlier, so it evens out. 
Now the base is loaded for De Shields, who lines one to right center. It's down. Puig gave his best effort, and it's going to be a bases clearing double and a three run lead for the Texas Rangers. 20th double of the year for Delino De Shields Jr. And the struggles with the bullpen continue. Bottom eight, Twins down three. It's their largest deficit of the day, but here they come again with a base hit to right by Mitch Garver. Jorge Polanco falling behind 0-2, and then hit on the knee. He's all right and gets the free base in a pitcher's count. Charlie Blackman up next, nearly hits one down the line. Two strikes, he's hit on the knee as well. Two straight hit by pitches and the bases are loaded with nobody down. A huge spot for Josh Harrison who already doubled earlier. 1-1, one, one, hit hard to center field, it's caught. And that is a tag. Mitch Garver heads home, 9-7, one away, still two aboard. Big spot for Johnny Sandoval. He got his first RBI earlier, but can't catch up to the slider and strikes out. Back to Yasiel Puig, who pops up into shallow left center. And the Rangers will send us to inning number nine. Twins down two. We turn to Kevin Quackenbush to get us through the inning. And another extra base hit for Texas. Rugnet Odor beats the shift. Just a really tough day for the pitchers ever since that fourth inning. Thankfully here, Jarrett Parker does pop up just behind second base. And then he was warm. I decided to put in Rysel Iglesias just to try to get this final out. And Kenny Vargas does ground to third, so it was a decent choice. And we go bottom nine trying to pull off another comeback, erase another deficit. We have the right hitters up. I knew that. AJ Ramos comes in to face Paul Goldschmidt. One, two. Grounded up the middle. Stopped. Throw out number one. Nelson Cruz up next. The 1-1 is jammed a bit awkwardly up the middle. Good play, Odor. Better throw. And two away. Miguel Sano, our last hope here in the ninth. Trying to stay alive in this game. 3-2. Fastball inside. We have the tying run at the plate. TC trying to pump up the crowd. And we have a pretty good player at the dish as well. It's Mitch Garver. But he falls behind 0-2. And Garver strikes out to close the game. Texas splits the series. And they prove to be a huge problem for our pitching staff. Nine runs. We should not lose when we can score seven. I think this game was a great representation of where this team is at right now. We are really inconsistent when it comes to pitching. The bullpen is our biggest weakness, and the offense is getting really good again. Looking at the numbers, we are now a top 10 hitting team, but a bottom 10 pitching team, and these are the kinds of games you're going to end up with. Still, we're 44-38, and 38, and that is after a tremendous recovery after the way our season began. Let me know what you think of these episodes, where maybe I do some simming in the beginning and then just play through one game. It's a format that I think will allow me to continue posting episodes on a more frequent basis, so maybe I sim a little bit less, but it's made up for by more consistent uploads. There are the numbers. The bullpen. What's wrong? I thought we acquired the right talent this year. Tony Watson hasn't worked out. Will Smith hasn't worked out. Jeremy Jeffress only worked out last season. Jake Reed is regressing. Tyler Duffy is like the only reliever doing well right now. Rysel Iglesias is good when we can get to him. And then Quackenbush is good as well. But we have to get some outside help, I feel. Taking a look at some league leaders, Mike Trout basically has a whole year of production crammed into less than half a season. He's awesome still. In the American League, Luke Gregerson leads in saves. I want to see Rysel Iglesias up there, but we're not giving him enough opportunities. For ERA, our best obviously belongs to Dallas Keuchel. And Gary Tadano is actually one of the best when it comes to limiting home runs. And that's not one of his strengths on the rating scale, so I'm happy about that. Yadier Alvarez and Dallas Keuchel, two of the best strikeout pitchers in the American League. And if you're a fan of the war metric, it favors Dallas Keuchel and Miguel Sano pretty heavily. 
It also rates Gary Tadano and Yadier Alvarez really close together. So there must be maybe a good FIP for Gary Tadano or something. But obviously, patience is paying off there. Checking out the National League as well. Home run leader is John Carlos Stanton, Joey Votto behind him, Justin Turner, Kyle Schwarber. And of course, you're going to see a lot of LA Dodgers toward the top of all these leaderboards. And wait until you see their record. One of the best offenses and arguably the best pitching staff. Eric Young Jr. is having a fantastic season with 24 stolen bases and a very good on-base percentage. D. Gordon also playing at a very high level and the Miami Marlins might actually surprise you when I show you the standings. Lots of great pitchers though for LA. They've acquired Madison Bumgarner. Clayton Kershaw is still the best. They have the best closer in Kenley Jansen. It's unfair how good the Dodgers are. When you look at the numbers, it looks like they have five legitimate starting pitchers who could be a number one in a lot of different places or a number two. They're the most stacked team in the major leagues right now. And here are the standings. Angels lead the AL West with a 53-29 record. Yankees lead the AL East, but it's very tight. The NL East, led by the Marlins actually, 47-35. Cubs lead the Central, and finally, a 62-19 record for the Dodgers. But I wanted to take you through the Marlins right here because I felt that they were really surprising to be this good. They still have Stanton, Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna. They have some good players. What I was really impressed by, though, was what they're getting from their pitchers. Pitchers who are rated very close to what we have. I might need to find a way to get their pitching coach on our staff because look at the overall and look at the stats. These are players who are 80 and under and they're having fantastic seasons and they're a first place team. I am really envious right now of the Miami Marlins and I can't believe I'm saying that right now. But that's going to bring us to the end of episode 93, everybody. Again, hope you're enjoying the action lately. A lot of you want more twins. I want to bring it more often to the channel. And I'd love to see your feedback down below in the comment section. Please smash that like button if you're enjoying the Twins franchise. Subscribe to the channel with much more to come. And I'll be seeing you with more Twins franchise action shortly. Have a great day, everybody. See you soon.